Drive to School podcast, and I am Pastor Goodman, and this is this is Kristen Sanchez, the events executive of Higher Things, uh, and I brought somebody who stresses me out because today we're talking about we're talking about stress. Do I stress you out, or do I make you less stressed, or is it both? Does it depend on the day? Okay, it depends on the day. I try to help. Keep going. It's a stressful time of year. Um, <laughs> So we have finals, we have family, we have Christmas, we have all of the personal stuff that has kept you awake at night. Stress is one of those things that, uh, it, it exists in everybody's life to every degree. It's one of those things, too, where, especially when you get old like us, um, you almost tend to look down on uh, younger people's stress, because, like, what's the big deal? It's a final, you will go into a college, and your high school GPA won't matter anymore, because you will be in college. Once you have a job, your GPA doesn't matter. If you really, really have a problem with the GPA, just become a pastor like me. Um, it, there's lots of things to sort of, we, we look down on this, but when, when you feel that pressure, when you can't sleep, when the elephant is sitting on your chest, stress is, is a real thing. Yeah, that's the kind of thing that comes with, with context and with years and with wisdoms. Like, wisdom is an actual real thing that you don't believe in when you're in high school and college. And until you start to get something, you're like, oh, there was a lot of stuff I didn't know. Right, now I know some more stuff. And But in those moments when that is your world and that is the thing that's given to you to deal with on the daily, every single day, like, that stress is real. And that affects your body, that affects your soul, that affects things in the same way that, you know, maybe larger or different types of things affect a 30, 40, 50 year old person. Like those things are real and change the way that you interact with the world. Right. And maybe that's one of the things that we can talk about just even to somebody who interacts with people who are different than them by a different age. It's easy to look at somebody else's problems and, and downplay the stress that comes from them. But the stress is simply, it's, it's pressure. That it's, it's pressure that you feel from having to do or be something. Or be right. Like, there, there's so many different ways that that stress can play in your life, whether it's doing the thing the right way or doing the thing um, in the way that's going to make you proud or someone proud of you or things like that. And that stress is going to change the way that you interact with the people around you um, and allow them to interact with you. It's going to put them and pit them at either uh, in opposition against you or alongside you. And a lot of times when you're stressed... Um, against your better judgment, against what's best for you, you don't want somebody walking through it with you. you. You keep them at an arm's distance a lot of times. Right, because, I mean, you're just trying to get through the one thing at a time and to actually have to explain or even feel the shame of not being so good at it that it doesn't bother you in the first place. It, it leaves stress as always feeling like the enemy. And, and feeling alone. Right. Yeah. That, that's something to sort of recognize, first and foremost, that stress isn't a bad thing. Stress is actually pressure. And, and pressure is, in a lot of cases, a good thing. It refines diamonds. It refines, yeah. It, it can make th make you better, make you strive to be better. You learn from those things, obviously. It's not easy. Right. Stress is pressure. And so pressure can refine. Pressure can make something stronger. But where there's something that's already weak, pressure can break. And this is, I think, where we, we sort of recognize what stress does. We talk about, you know, sort of the, the, the mental breakdowns, the, the anxiety attacks that, that come with these kind of things that just sort of leave you paralyzed and unable to do anything. And this is a different kind of stress. Um, this is not sin, but this is pressure on something that is sinful. And, and that's where we tend to, to sometimes seek ways to feel better that aren't healthy or, or good. That's where we, we want to be all the more alone instead of with the people that we have been given to, to love and, and be loved by. Um, this, this kind of stress then, well, we can confront it in a couple of different ways. Um, Unhealthily, we can pull in our, on ourselves, you know, um, separate ourselves, internalize everything, or think that we have to muster something up amongst ourselves to try to make it better. And in the end, none of those ways are going to be helpful. None of those ways are going to pull you out of it in the way um, that, that should be, that you should be pulled out of it. Right. Um, and, and so instead of that, um, our Lord leaves us with something. Uh, he, he, he says, uh, do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for each day is its own trouble. And we almost tend to focus on the do not be anxious about tomorrow part like there's it just an off feel, Yeah, it feels like don't be anxious, which is when you're stressed, when you're in the midst of those things. It's just one more thing to do or not to do. It's a terrible thing to tell somebody. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so even when our Lord does this, first of all, he gives us all of the promises. So if you're looking for something that you can't shut your brain off in, if you don't be anxious because look at the birds. I take care of the birds. If I can take care of birds, birds are dumb. I can take care of you. Um, he doesn't just say don't think. He says think about my promises. 
Yeah, he pulls you out from the thing that you're spiraling on and allows you to focus on something outside of and different than you. He pulls your view away from yourself onto something that he has created and sustained in the same way that he is trying to show you, I will do this and I am doing this for you even in the midst of this. Right, and this I think is... is Maybe the part that we gloss over right away, but you caught it. He, he closes this not by saying everything's going to be fine, but he actually says the opposite. He says sufficient for each day is its own trouble. There like, will be trouble. Right. And, and you have enough trouble for today. You don't need to worry about tomorrow's trouble because you actually have something to do with today's. Um, this is actually one of the great gifts of, of vocation. We talk about vocation almost always in, in terms of, of burden and, and almost never in terms of gift. Um, so I know that as a vocation, if you go into the table of duties in your catechism, it'll lay out like the things that you're supposed to be doing as a student or as a parent, um, as, as a teacher, as, as a pastor or a lay person, all of the different the, the ways that we sort of line up. But, but recognize that these are not just simply, these are your to-do list, but these are the things that God would see accomplished through people like you. So through parents, God would see these things accomplished. Well, if God wants it done, you know what? You can worry about whether or not you'll be a good enough mom for tomorrow, but worry about today. That means that when it comes to the today things, hug your kids. He will accomplish his will through the people that he has placed in people's lives. I mean, that's vocation, right? He he allows people to work, he allows himself to work through the people in people's lives to accomplish the good things that he has in, in place for them. Right, and that's where the pressure can actually be a motivating thing. There, there is a reason to get up off the couch and study for your test. There is a reason to actually confront your weird uncle who's going to say dumb political stuff at Christmas uh, because you've been given to actually love him and, and not simply avoid him, not simply run from him, and also not just prove him wrong because he's wrong, but, but just to simply be in the same room and love him because the Savior was born to redeem him and you. And, and that's enough for today. You can try and figure out how to fix his problems another day but but today you get to live inside of your vocation today you get to actually feel the stress is something that you can deal with not for the future but for this moment and so i don't know what college you'll get into because of a math final but i know that if you look in the textbook because of that pressure that you feel take the test and then let the cards fall where god needs them to and recognize that stress isn't supposed to like squish you into something that can propel you into the future that's already coming until there's not supposed to be a day anymore because the lord returns god will handle the tomorrow so for each day there is enough trouble there is enough things to do in your vocation to, to keep you more than busy and so when you feel stressed because you're, cause you're gonna yeah. first pray because this is actually a place where not simply you can pray away the problems or maybe then God will actually help you, but it's it's a chance to reflect upon his promises. Yeah, and find, find rest. That's, yeah. that's what prayer is. It's a, it allows us to find the comfort in the things that God has already accomplished, the things he's promising to accomplish, and the fact that you are saved and sustained through all of it. Right. It's, it's that reminder, because we, we might know it, but we still need to hear it. Always. And, and so this is a way that we can, we can speak it from a voice of authority, because God said, pray this way. Um, and, and also then go and be with the people and not by yourself who will also tell you these promises of God. None of them just become true because we prayed them or told them, but we need the reminder. The thing that's hard in stress is, is as we talked about, you know, separating yourself from, uh, from all of the good things around you, but recognizing that even in, in the stress and in the frustrations of all that, the thing that's going to pull you out of it are the things that are spoken into you and the things that are given to you, and the things that are, it, it's all the direction, your direction, right? And so it's the word of God spoken to you. It's the prayers that he has given to you that you can then speak out and speak back. It's the people he's given to you around you. It's the worship services that in the liturgy, where that comes into you and, and allows you to uh, receive all of the good gifts that he has in those times, it's all spoken into you. And so you are sustained and you are taken through that stress, through the promises and gifts that God has already given you. Absolutely. And so, and then from there, live inside of your vocation and love to your neighbor and recognize that God is working even there. Stress is not a, a, a bad thing. Stress is not an enemy. Um, stress will lean on the things that are though. And, and so for those things that are weak, that's where we find strength in, in Christ. We find forgiveness for sins. We find vocation for where we are not as sufficient on ourselves because we, we're not supposed to be sufficient on ourselves. Um, we, we find each other. And then from there, we, we find his promises never to leave us nor forsake us, but to bring us to the tomorrow that we need to be in. And so there, we can actually then live inside of that day and just go to sleep. Mm -hmm. Just go to sleep because you're baptized. And, and that's, that's enough. That's enough. That's enough. Bye. Woo! <laughs>